Week 14, Monday A reading from the letter of Pope Saint Clement I to the Corinthians Let each fix his eyes on the good of the whole community. It is written, Seek the company of the holy, for they who seek their company shall themselves be made holy. And it says somewhere else, With the innocent you shall be innocent, with the chosen you shall be chosen, with the wavered you shall be wavered. So let us take the innocent and the upright for our companions, for it is they who are God's chosen ones. Why must there be all this quarreling and bad blood? these feuds and dissensions among you? Have we not all the same God and the same Christ? Is not the same Spirit of grace shed upon us all? Have we not all the same calling in Christ? Then why are we rending and tearing asunder the limbs of Christ and fermenting discord against our own body? Why are we so lost to all sense and reason that you have forgotten our membership of one another? Remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, O to the man, it would have been a good thing for him if he had never been born, instead of upsetting one of my chosen ones. It would be better for him to be pitched into the sea with a millstone hung round him than to lead a single one of my chosen astray. Your disunity, however, has led many astray. And yet, in spite of the discouragement and doubt it has sown in many minds and the distress it has brought upon us all, you still persist in your disaffection. Read your letter from the blessed apostle Paul again. What did he write to you in those early gospel days? How truly the things he said about himself and Cephas and Apollos were inspired by the Spirit. For even at that time you had been setting up favorites of your own. Such partiality was perhaps less culpable in those days. For two of the men you favored were apostles of the highest repute and the third was one of whom they had themselves given their approval. There must be no time lost in putting an end to this state of affairs. We must fall on our knees before the Master and implore Him with tears graciously to pardon us and bring us back again into the honorable and virtuous way of brothers who love one another. For that is the gateway of righteousness, the open gate to life. As it is written, Open me the gate of righteousness, that I may go in and praise the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall come in by it. There are many gates standing open, but the gate of righteousness is the gate of Christ, where blessings are in store, for every incomer who pursues the path of godliness and uprightness and goes about his duties without seeking to create trouble. By all means, let a man be a true believer. Let him be capable of expounding the secrets of revelation and a judicious assessor of what he hears and a pattern of virtue in all his doings. But the higher his reputation stands, so much the more humble-minded he ought to be. And furthermore, his eyes should be fixed on the good of the whole community rather than on his own personal advantage.